Let's now solve this very interesting similar triangles problem. So in this triangle ABC, we're given AC is 8. Okay, so AC is 8 and we're also given that point D lies on BC such that BAD equal to CAD. So given that BAD equals CAD, right? These angles are equal. So let's, let's just call both of these quantities X. This part, let's call it X. This part is X and this part is X as well. Okay, so the line, we're right, given M is the midpoint of BC. So this part equals this part because M is the midpoint. The line passing through M parallel to AD, which is this, intersects, whoops, intersects a lines AB at points E, F, and E, like this. So F, it intersects AB, E at AC, as you can see everything in the diagram. And we're given EF is root 2. So let's make, let's see what that looks like. EF is root 2. So this is root 2. And AF is 1. Now, AF, this over here is 1. Now, I don't know about you, but this reminds me of 45, 45, 90 triangles a lot. But obviously, we can't just assume they're 45, 45, 90. We have to see why that's true. Okay, so first of all, we've got this parallel condition. We're seeing the line passing through M parallel to AD. So this line is parallel to this line. And we know parallel lines come with a lot of angle conditions and similar triangles. So let's see what angle conditions it gives us. These two lines are parallel, right? And we can think of this as like a transversal, right? So these two angles over here, they're going to be equal because of corresponding angles in parallel lines. So that's so let's make that tiny bit tinier. So both of those quantities are x by parallel lines. And then notice that by vertical angles, this angle equals this angle. So vertical angle says that this is going to be x over there. Right? Alternatively, you could have just seen that these are these are parallel lines and this is a transversal, so alternate interior angles directly gives us this statement that these angles are equal. Oh, but look here, this is a line. So, so we can use supplementary angles now. So the reason we're trying to angle chase is because angle chasing will give us angle conditions which can help us see which triangles are similar and which triangles are not similar. Because the similar triangles give us lots of valuable information. So this is 2x and because the total sum is 180, then we know that this part over here is 180 minus 2x because this part over here is 2x so the part over there is 180 minus 2x. Now this is a triangle and a triangle has a total angle sum of 180. So let's just call this quantity over here let's say it's y. Then we have y we have this angle plus this angle plus this angle equals 180. y plus x plus 180 minus 2x will be equal to 180. And that is the angle condition here. And again, when we have these kind of complicated diagrams, the good idea is using intersecting lines, using parallel lines, or whatever, or even circles sometimes. Sometimes you might have similar triangles in a circle, which if you remember the inscribed angle theorem, that will give us some similarity conditions as well. So always be on the lookout for those because those give you good angle conditions, which are helpful in these types of problems. Okay, so we have y plus x plus 180 minus 2x is going to be equal to 180. And that would mean that if y plus x plus 180 minus 2x is 180, then y must be equal to x. Because only then x plus x plus 180 minus 2x is 180, right? This is because this is equal to 180, 
Now, minus 2x and plus x become minus x. 180 cancels out from both sides. We're left with y minus x is 0, or y equals x. Okay, so this part over here is x, this part over here is x. Hmm, that's isosceles triangle. Two base, oh, two base angles are equal, so that means this side, which we know to be 1, must be equal to this side. So we know that, now we also know this side over here is going to be 1 as well. And 1, 1, root 2, that's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So our suspicion was indeed correct, and now we can erase all of these x's, because and now we know it's a 1, 1, root 2, 45, 45, 90 triangle. And we know x is 45, right, because 2x, we have that 2x plus 90, we would have the 2x plus, or sorry, 2x plus 1, we, because it's 1, because it's an isosceles triangle, these two angles over here are equal, and because one of the sides is 1, and one of the sides is root 2, and we know these two angles are equal, it has to be a 45-45-90 triangle. So 45-45-90, which means that this angle over here, which was x, is also 45, so that means all the x's in the diagram we can mark as 45. Cool. We've already gained so much valuable information about this diagram. We're still not done. We have to find the length of segment BC. BC. And notice that because M is a midpoint, BC is just equal to 2 times MC because of the midpoint condition. So now it suffices to just find MC. But how are we going to do that? MC. Hmm. MC, that's going to be tricky. So, M is a midpoint, D is just this point, it's also going to be there. Notice how we would have that this angle is equal to this angle. Try it a tiny bit smaller. This angle is equal to this angle by parallel line properties, right? And similarly, we would also have this angle is equal, this angle is equal to this angle by parallel line properties right, because these two lines over here are parallel. Maybe that will come in use later on. I don't know, will it? Okay, and oh, we can see more similar triangles. Look here, we've got this triangle over here. Notice how this angle, oops, we've got those two red angles that I marked are equal, and they share the angle at the center, and the angle at the center is the one MCA, this angle here. And those two angles are shared, so that means that those two angles are shared amongst both the small triangle here and the bigger one here. So that means that angle-angle similarity means those two triangles are going to be similar. Cool. And what is the scale factor of that similarity? The scale factor of that similarity is going to be 8 to 9, because this to this is 8 to 9, indeed. Okay, so now, now what should we do? We need to find the length of segment MC, like we already discussed, but that, that's kind of just like a floating segment in midair. We know it's part of a right triangle, but hmm. This is a right triangle, and M is kind of like the midpoint. So it seems like MC... What if we just draw this line over here? What if we draw this line over here, down there? Now, why am I drawing this line? Because M is the midpoint. So, and this is a right triangle. So if I drop this altitude over here, if I drop an altitude over here, then we would have that these two triangles are similar. So CM is kind of just like a floating thing in midair. But if we drop an altitude, to the floor AC, to the base of the triangle AC, then now we have another right triangle over here to work with. And this can seem like, why do we just draw extra lines? This is actually the hardest part of geometry, drawing extra lines, extending, but dropping an altitude is the key technique. And after dropping an altitude, 
we have some many new relations that we are ready to deal with, right? Because the midpoint condition suggests that we've got a ratio and dropping an altitude will help us use that ratio indeed. So we know CM to CB is one to two because of the midpoint condition. And we know they share both of the, both this triangle, oh, no, it's not what I meant to do. Both this triangle and this triangle share a common angle at the center here. And they both have a 90 degree angle here. So you might be wondering, why is this angle 90? Because we dropped the altitude of the triangle. We, we chose this point. It was not given. We added an extra point. So we get to choose whatever, wherever this is. And we chose it to be the altitude. So therefore, angle, angle, because that's a shared angle, right? That means those two triangles are going to be similar. And just to, let me draw that in with some highlighters. Boom, boom, boom. Oops, that's not what I meant. And this one. Those two triangles are similar. And because MC is half of CB, we have that the ratio of similarity is 1 to 2. And remember, we're given AC equals 8. So this whole thing is 8. Oh, but then this part over here is going to be half of 8 because of similar triangles. So we're given that this over here is going to be equal to 4. So, oh, MC. So wouldn't it be nice if MC is part of a right triangle? We know this thing here. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just find this height here? Then we could just use Pythag theorem. So how do we find this height here? How should we approach that? Hmm. Notice this segment. Do you see any other more similar triangles? Yes. Hmm. So the key idea here is because this is an altitude, this is 90, and this is 90 over here, we, and we also have that by the similarity, we would have that this angle and this angle, they're equal, right? Like similar triangles, angles equal. But then look, line, line, transversal, if these two angles are equal, that's corresponding angles. That means these two lines must be parallel, right? The reverse is also true. If two corresponding angles are equal, the lines must be parallel. So this line is parallel to this line. But aha, if this line is parallel to the whole thing, it's also parallel to this little section. So now let's draw that in with permanent pen. We have that this part is parallel to this part. And that must be true. And that means now, now we can use more angle chasing properties. Because these two lines are parallel, and you can think of this as like a transversal through those parallel lines, this angle over here equals this angle over here. They're both going to be equal to 45 degrees. So, those are both 45 by parallel lines, angle, 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 AA similarity. So this triangle is similar to this triangle, which means the big triangle, this one, is also a 45, 45, 90 triangle because angles are equal. 45, 45, 90 triangle indeed. And that means this ratio is 1 to root 2 to root 2. Okay, so we know, we know that this whole thing is 8, right? And we know that this part is 4. So that means this part over here must also be 4. And because this over here is 1, and this part over here, like we just discussed, is 4, that means the whole thing, the whole thing from here to here, that's going to be 5. Because this part is 4 and this part is 1. 4 plus 1 is 5. And it's a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So both of these legs are going to be equal to 5. So this height is also going to be 5 as well. Ah, this is 5, this is 4. Now we use Pythagorean theorem. Square root of 5 squared plus 4 squared equals square root 25 plus 16 equals square root 41. And that's going to be our answer. 
or sorry, that's not our answer because that is the length of MC, right? And then we found that BC was two times MC. We're looking for BC. So if this is equal to MC, right? So B, this is going to be two square root 41. And that is our answer. So the key idea here was looking at the parallel lines, noticing the, noticing the angle condition, finding one, one root two. And then after that, we noticed that to find this length CM, we would have to, it was the midpoint in the middle of nowhere. So it would be nice if we could drop the altitude. Then we would know this part is four and this part is four as well. And then this part would just be half of this part, right, as well. And then this part was four. So we realized that if we could just find this part over here, we could use Pythag to finish. And to do that, we looked at this triangle. It was 45, 45, 90. Now using parallel line properties, these two angles are equal. So this is also a 45, 45, 90 triangle. This is five, this is five, and yeah, we're done from here. So because now this is five, four, we use Pythag to find MC and then find BC just like that. A great problem that's just looking for angle chasing and hunting down those similar triangles.